Metal Ions and Wear Rate in the Birmingham Hip Resurfacing. This lecture will be covering wear and friction, wear debris kinetics, and metal ion studies. Wear is the removal of material from one or both solid surfaces. This can occur in a sliding, rolling or impact motion. Mechanisms of wear including adhesive wear, abrasive wear and also different modes of wear such as wear between two primary surfaces, primary and a secondary surface, third body wear and wear between two non-primary surfaces. The Birmingham hip resurfacing has a polar bearing which is essential for aiding in fluid film lubrication. If we look at this in detail, a small amount of fluid adheres to each of the surfaces. When in motion, the moving surface generates fluid velocity which forces the fluid into the joint space. At rest, the bearing is dry, but when in full motion, a fluid film is generated. This fluid film lubrication is sustained as long as there is movement and also reduces the rate of wear. It allows the hip to move freely without barely any friction, which is ideal for high impact activities. But if the wear rate is extremely low, how is it measured? The only way we can begin to understand the wear process in such scenarios is through the study of metal iron release. Wear debris kinetics. The BHR has the same metallurgy as the first generation metal and metal hip replacements by ring. Although they differ in design, the microstructure is very much the same and gives the BHR its strength and durability. The BHR consists mainly of cobalt and chromium alloy and small percentages of carbon and molybdenum. When wear occurs on the surface of the cobalt chromium matrix, particles and metal ions are released into the surrounding environment. Wear particles are insoluble and are engulfed by macrophages and giant cells. They are carried through the lymphatic system through to tissues such as the liver and spleen. Metal ions are soluble and can pass freely into the bloodstream. Accumulation of high levels of metal ions may be toxic and have adverse effects on the body. However, the metal ions released from the BHR are essential elements and are required by the body for vital metabolic functions. The body also has an effective renal excretory mechanism for any unwanted metal ions. The excretion rate for cobalt is around 48 hours, whereas chromium is longer as it is stored in cells. Metal ion studies in modern metal-metal bearings. There are many concerns about metal ion exposure in metal-metal bearings, such as what are the levels and what about carcinogenicity. Areas which are being thoroughly investigated in many of our metal ion studies. It is important when starting a research study to fully understand the goal when considering materials and methods. Many of our metal ion studies, 24 hour urine output is measured. This is a timed output of iron and is a good in vivo estimate of total wear. As well as a 24 hour urine collection, blood samples are also obtained for a more accurate assessment of metal ion production and transport. Although there is some dispute as to which sample is most reliable, Whole blood is collected in lithium heparin tubes where it can be frozen as it is taken. Serum however needs to be collected in a plain tube and then spun in a centrifuge to obtain a clear sample. If whole blood samples are left and not spun promptly, the red cells will burst and give stained sample of serum with unreliable concentrations of metal ions. But when measuring serum samples for metal ion concentrations, it is not always reliable so you need to ensure uniformity. 
A study carried out by Merritt and Brown measures the ratio of betaline concentrations in plasma and red blood cells. Because the ratios of red blood cells to plasma levels were so different, both blood compartments need to be evaluated. So measuring serum samples alone is less reliable. Two of the most widely used techniques for methylene analysis are graphite furnace atomic absorption spectrometry and high resolution inductive decoupled plasma mass spectrometry. There are some significant differences between these two techniques. Graphite furnace atomic absorption works on a light frequency absorption principle. A cathode lamp shines a light into the flame where the sample is released. A detector on the other side measures how much of the light passes through and how much is absorbed by the elements in the flame. The detector can only measure one element at a time, so a fresh sample needs to be introduced for analysis of a different element. It works on a similar principle as a Bunsen flame test. High resolution inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry works on a mass to charge ratio principle. Small amounts of the sample is ionized through a filament and the charged ions then pass through a huge magnetic field. Larger ions with a lower charge are not deflected as much, whereas smaller ions with a higher charge are deflected the most. The amount of each ion deflected is then detected and measured. A study carried out by Broadner included the analysis of methylene in serum samples in patients with metal-metal articulating surfaces. These are the results he published from serum samples analysed by graphite furnace atomic absorption. If you look closely at these results, you can see that over two-thirds of the values are below the limit of detection and therefore have been given an arbitrary value of 0.15. This shows that the analytical technique used is not sensitive enough to measure the low levels of metal ions. High resolution inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry has many advantages over graphite furnace atomic absorption, such as lower limits of detection, which makes it far more sensitive. It can handle complex matrices such as whole blood, it has multi-element analysis from the same sample which it has reduced risk of contamination and has several sample analysis. The one big disadvantage of this technique is that it is more expensive than other techniques. The two studies with measured daily output of metal ion concentrations is one an ongoing prospective study and these results are compared with a cross-sectional study. The inclusion criteria for both studies are consecutive male patients with no other metallic implants and include 50 to 54 millimeter heads. 24 hour urine collections are obtained and are measured by high resolution inductive coupled plasma mass spectrometry. How do the levels of BHR compare with the patients with historic metal on metal total hip replacements? Here is a graph showing the mean values of this prospective study group. Metal ions in urine levels. The metal ion levels in urine, there is an increase in metal ion output in the early months. The patients are starting to increase their activity levels. This peak is around six months after which it starts to decrease and plateau off. It continues at a steady state for up to five years. If we look at the metal ion levels in whole blood, there is a significant difference in metal ions from one year down to five years. This is a ring prosthesis in situ. We can compare the results from the first generation metal on metal bearing THRs to the model metal on metal bearing BHRs. This is a scatter distribution of cobalt for both groups. The mean of each group is also shown with a 95% confidence level. There is no significant difference between these two groups. Also with the chromium, the results lie within the same range. Other areas of interest which may have an effect on metal ion production are bearing diameter and reduced clearance. We can compare our cobalt urine output results to a group of patients with a metasol component. The Birmingham hip resurfacing, as said before, are all 50 mm heads. The metasols are all 28 mm heads. This data does not show any significant difference in the metal ion output between both groups. 
Therefore, bearing diameter does not make a difference. Does reduced clearance make a difference? To clarify the term clearance, it is the distance between the edge of the head to the inner surface of the cup. R2 minus R1 equals a radial clearance. We can see the metal ion urine output for the regular clearance BHR and the low clearance BHR. The results seem to lie within the same range for each post-operative stage. As the low clearance study is still in its early phase, it will require further assessment before we can predict any outcomes. To conclude this lecture, the Birmingham resurfacing has the same metallurgical characterizations as historic metal and metal total hip replacements. Whole blood levels of cobalt and chromium in the BHRs are then in the same range as historic metal and metal THRs. Urine levels show an increase in the first year, after which there is no further increase. Greater bearing diameter does not reduce wear, and lower clearance needs further assessment. And that concludes our lecture on basic metal lines. Thank you very much.